Nigeria's federal government to recover over 3 billion naira, that's about uh, more than 6 million pounds of stolen government funds globally between 2021 and 2022. We'll have some analysis of this on The Breakfast this morning. The weekend is upon us and that means the English Premier League is back. We'll discuss that and the fortunes of Nigeria's Falconets. We also have uh, an in-depth analysis of some of today's news super headlines, some pretty interesting stories on the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. A very good morning to you. We're back uh, with uh, the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful Friday, the last day of the weekend. We've been having interesting conversations all through this week, reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Mercy Bilpo's beautiful Friday morning, and thanks for joining us. Interesting, interesting. I can't wait to go, Mercy. Uh, very interesting conversations this That's morning. Fine. And Friday is upon us, which means that the weekend is here. Of course. <laughs> I don't know what plans we have for the weekend. I, then, I, I'm not sure. But I'm sure that when we come back on Monday, we'll have some new drama to talk about. Definitely. You know what I say about uh, the polity and the occurrences in the country today. New day, new drama. You know. of course. Well, we'll talk about some of the drama that happened between when we were here, I was yesterday morning and now, um, and we call it a top training segment. I think we should call it new drama segment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we have some, some training stories, the uh, emergence of a, a, a gentleman uh, by the name Rhodes Viva of the, as a governorship candidate of the People's Democratic, of, of the Labour Party rather, um, in Lagos State. This is uh, an interesting development. Uh, he's someone who has been uh, in the polity for some time. The name is popular. He was uh, at some point uh, a governorship aspirant on the platform of uh, the People's Democratic Party. We all know what happened with the People's Democratic Party. We all know how that went and the fact that the party, um, you know, produced uh, the man properly called Jando. Uh, the founder of the Lagos for Lagos movement, who himself was an APC mm -hmm. as its governorship candidate. And uh, the fact that he also went ahead to pick a running mate. We're talking about uh, none other than the popular Jennifer. You know, <laughs> I'm sure you like watching Jennifer. So it, it seems to be a game of musical, a political musical chairs. Messi, remember back in the day, we used to have this game where, you know, it would, uh, I don't know, if you played this game at parties, children's party, where you sit down, they'll put maybe if you're five, they'll put four chairs. <laughs> and then when they stop the music, you know, whoever sits down the chair, the rest, the one who's left out, can't have to leave. So it seems to be a game of political uh, music, music, dancing chairs, you know. Jando was an APC, left APC to PDP to get a uh, governorship ticket in Lagos State. Rhodes Vivo was in PDP, left PDP to go to Labour Party to get uh, the governorship ticket. Uh, for Lagos State. So, so it, it, politicians are not staying in one place, they're moving all over the place just so that they can get uh, uh, the, 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 the tickets that they want, be it presidential ticket, uh, be it um, governorship ticket, and it's nothing new. Um, the man who is also the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, had to move from PDP to Labour Party to get his ticket. The man who is the presidential candidate of uh, the People's Democratic Party, Atiko Worker, had to move from APC uh, to PDP to get the ticket. But before he moved from APC to PDP, he had moved from PDP to APC. So it's, it's a part of the polity in the country. Um, so this is what we're saying. He is a former senatorial candidate of the PDP, uh, Badebo Rhodes Viva. Um, he polled 111 votes to beat his opponent, Onwo Mushud Adegoke Salvador, who scored 102 votes in an exercise that featured 216 delegates. Uh, the primary for the replacement of the candidate of the party. Of course, we know uh, the Electoral Act and what's been happening mm -hmm. with all these placeholder candidates and all that. Maybe the party here doesn't have someone okay. yet. Or maybe the person who came out, they'll say, oh, oh you know what, step down. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's, you know, in the Labour Party, Obi was not part of the picture. Mm -hmm. It was Professor Patu Tomi and Co. Mm -hmm. who told me step down, but they had not had a primary at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, but because the, the, um, the, the uh, INEC deadline has already passed, and for you to have a fresh candidate, the candidate who was elected would have to, uh, uh, would have to step aside, write to the party, say, I'm, I'm not doing it again. 
Then, then I, the party will write to Anakin say, I'm not doing it. He's not doing it again. <laughs> they now do a fresh, fresh election. So it's quite interesting to see. Um, the, the, the primary f uh, for the replacement of the earlier candidate was witnessed by Einek. Uh, the exercise has been, had been stalled, we were told, uh, since Monday over allegations of compromise to the delegates list uh, raised by Salvador. Now, Salvador is one of uh, the, 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 the aspirants for that governorship ticket of the Labour Party. He was the opponent uh, to Rhodes Vivo, Badebo Rhodes Vivo. Uh, Salvador, that's uh, Honorable Moshud Adegoke, Adegoke Salvador, scored 102 votes, so he came a close second out of uh, 216 delegates, while Rhodes Vivo pulled 111 votes. Um, so, so Salvador had raised allegations of compromise to the delegates list, and so the, the thing didn't hold, you know, it didn't hold. Uh, he called for the prime to be cancelled. He said that uh, he had lost confidence in the electoral committee. He said a lot of things. But the prime was moved from the previous venue, which was the International Airport Road, to another venue in Ikeja Jiari. So these things, there are a lot of talking points here, but that's, that's a bit of a background to how um, Badebo Roads Viva emerged as a Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos State. So, so let me even start, you know, from the part where... Uh, we've talked about, you've talked about the fact that you have some of these persons who are vying for offices, whether at the federal level or at the state level, uh, moving from one political party to another. That has become a norm for us. And that has become, uh, you know, part of, part of uh, the political process. Uh, it has become, you know, a thing in uh, politics where you have, some people have tagged it as cross carpeting others have said decamping. I mean, different words and different phrases and whatever have been used to describe all of this. But it's quite saddening. I mean, it's just very simple. It's politics. And every other time that we talk about politics is interest. And so for every other time that you find people in conflict is that interest has not been represented. And so, yes, you have people who are dissatisfied because, um, you know, their interest has not been represented. And at the party level, we know that some of the things that will cause, uh, you know, the conflict at the party level would include the fact that internal democracy is not even uh, respected. So that would be one thing. And so it, it, there's a lot that goes on to the, the fact that you have the financing. And so who is actually uh, financing political parties at the end of the so you have uh, strong men at the party, and then they seem to dictate what happens. And so you also have the issue of Godfatherism, uh, where you have the governors imposing. It's a lot, but it goes on. And it just shows you that the kind of politics that we practice in Nigeria is the politics where, I mean, it lacks ideology. And so everyone can just move away. You stand for everything that concerns your interest and nothing that concerns the party. So loyalty is something that is, has been questioned over time with the party. So, um, but people have constantly questioned you know, the movement from one party to another. And uh, I also saw conversation and reactions from Nigerians saying, hey, first of all, you had Salvador who had moved from, uh, you know, the PDP, I mean, the APC, you know, to the Labour Party. And some people say, we need to verify this person. They need to be verified. So you have, that's what's going on. But um, coming to, you know, the recent development or the drama like Kofi would target, is that it's quite interesting. Internal conflict, party politics, because a house that is divided against itself cannot stand, and that's on the one hand. Now, the issue right here now would be between, uh, you know, Salvador and Vivor, who has emerged, you know, the uh, candidate, the governorship candidate for the Labour Party in Lagos State. Now, following the substitution primaries that held despite the protests, uh, by uh, the party's INEC recognized Gubor candidate. So you have the candidate saying, hey, we're not going to, I'm not accepting. And uh, making reference to the Electoral Act, just as Kofi had mentioned, according to the Electoral Act 2022, the only means of replacing a candidate before an election are uh, through voluntary withdrawal or death. That's what it is. At this point in time, the candidate that has been recognized by INEC is saying, hey, I know go agree, you know, and he's actually raised some concerns about electoral, you know, fraud and what have you, the fact that the process has not been very fair and free. But you have the candidate also saying, on the other hand, hey, well, we're going to reach out to him as a party man and all of that. A big question would be, if you want to become an opposition, because it's a thing, and if you follow the politics and, uh, you know, the way things have actually evolved over time, you understand that uh, the ruling party has been in power 
from inception, I mean, from the time that you talk about transition uh, to democratic governance from 1999, has there been any other party that has you know, ruled this particular state? So the opposition should get their acts together. That's what everyone would expect. At the time where you begin to have all of this, you know, rancors and you have all of this dispute and uh, bitterness in the party, people not agreeing because we need to follow the act. Some people say, hey, we need to give the president big thumbs up for what he did with the Electoral Act. The fact that he allowed that, you know, to see the light of day, it's a plus on our democracy. Well, let's see how all of this pans out. It's quite unfortunate. One would expect that an opposition party, knowing that they are an opposition for a state as Lagos, would like to get their acts together. You don't want to be divided. You don't want to begin to have all of that uh, back and forth. But let's see how things begin to unfold for the Labour Party right here in New York State. Well, that's it. Uh, we, we move away from that. Uh, we're still looking at the top trending. And on the other hand, it's the fact that the Nigerian military has said that uh, an arrest has been made of two persons who were involved in the Owo attack. Now, prior to this time, we also have that two persons were arrested. So we're looking at a total of four persons. These persons have been linked to uh, the ESWAP, and they have been arrested. First of August, that's the statement. Uh, some people are saying, should we uh, make this a big issue? Should we begin to you know, put our hands together and say, hey, it's suspected. It's what's suspected. If you have an attack, if you have people, because it's the government's responsibility across different quarters. Governance, it's what it's expected. Whether in Nigeria, outside of Nigeria, it's responsibility of government, which is constant, that they protect lives and properties. And so if government uh, or, you know, those at the helm of affairs uh, moving on and arresting these persons, then it's okay. It's just, you know, your duty to, um, you know, go ahead and ensure that they're arrested. Now, beyond being arrested, people are saying, we don't want to begin to hear stories because we know how all of these things actually pan out. Let the law actually take you know, a full course, the entire process. If they're found guilty, they should be prosecuted. And we expect that these persons, you know, uh, there's just more than that. So that there are a lot of persons who are out there. But we would like to say, well, we see what, you know, the security agency, the Nigerian military collaboration with other agencies are doing, and we say thumbs up to them. Yeah, merci. Um, so so uh, let's just, just, just give a background and... So listeners can understand what exactly happened. The, 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 the Chief of Defense Staff, Lucky Rabo, had announced um, on Tuesday that four, four persons had been, had been arrested in connection with this OR incident. And then yesterday, they gave an update. This is, um, this is coming from the Director of Defense, uh, or Defense Information, uh, Jimmy Akbo, yesterday, giving an update uh, saying that uh, really hours after the announcement that was made by uh, General Loki Rabo, uh, Chief of Defense Staff on, on Tuesday, that two more of the OR attacked, attackers had been arrested. Um, this arrest was carried out in uh, some in Ondo State, Ose, or a local government area of Ondo State on August 9. All right, on August 9. Uh, today is August what, 12, so 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know. So that Tuesday, after the man announced it on, on national TV, <laughs> go are you driving? Then, then, then they made more arrests. It's, it's a coincidence. As I mean, it so, really I, announced, so are you saying there's not possible? Yeah, I'm just giving the background now. According to the statement by the Director of Defense Information, uh, Jimmy Akbar, those arrested were Al Kasim Idris and Abdul Halim Idris. Uh, this is what he said. He said, quote, it is instructive to note that Abdul Halim, alongside other high-profile ISWAP uh, commanders, had also previously uh, coordinated attacks on military targets in Okene, uh, Okene local government area of Kogi State, resulting in casualties, uh, uh, a part of the statement said. You know, so is it that they were, they were on the trail of these guys while the announcement was being made, you know, Maybe they could have waited till they arrested these two. So they still were arrested. have found six. You understand? Or they just happened to have have arrested them, you know, coincidentally. Uh, I don't get it. So there's a lot, a lot that isn't too clear about what's going on. But the the the, uh, the, the director of defense information went on to say that um, the arrests were made through a collaborative effort by the military and SSS personnel. So that's good. That's a welcome development. However, there is um, 
there's a lot of this that uh, is is shrouded in in uh, in controversy. 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 Okay. You know, um, the emergence of um, the certain Idris Jimo, I think that's his name. There's an Idris who whose name popped up on the list I was given by um, Lucky Rab or the CDS. And uh, Nigerians being Nigerians, fished out the guy's picture as one of those who escaped from the Kuje prison attack. You know, so they, they were asking uh, if he was in Kuje max, uh, medium security prison. Uh, and the attack in Kuje occurred after the, the, uh, the, 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 the massacre. How, how did he, is it that he was in prison and then went to do the attack and went back to prison or what? So they're asking uh, uh, what's going on. Idris or Joe, he's even, I mean, I mean Nigerians <laughs> are wonderful. They even went to, you know, because we said, oh, federal government should, um, should show us the faces of those who have escaped for the prayer. At least put up something so that I kick. If someone sees them, they can say, hey, you, come here. I saw you. You escaped from Kuja prison. Come, I'll catch you. Stay there. You know, and no, then, but, 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 but faces but, were actually put out. Yeah, now. so now one of the faces put out, his name is Idris or Joe. Mm. One of the names called by the CDS on Tuesday as those they captured for the Omaska. His name is Idris Ojo. Mm. So is there something that we don't know? You know, is there something plain? I play. Mm. Now, hours after that statement, Roti Mercado, in order to take his, also take part of the glory, he came out and said, yes. He had to bugass more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bugass yes. has become. <laughs> yes, we had, we were also part of this, you know, uh, uh, um, we know, we've been, we've been aware. You know, we're just waiting for the military to announce, and they finally announced. By the way, he's not paid all his workers' salary. That's one story I saw yesterday from budget. He's the only state in the Southwest owing salaries is this one. Anyway, let's go on. That's an issue for another day. So he said yes, but he said we, they've been arrested since before now, been waiting for them to announce, and I'm happy they announced it. We're doing everything. But when the question was raised, who is Idris Ojo? Is it that he escaped from left Koje prison, went to shoot people, massacre people in cold blood, you know, and then and went, went back, back to, the to, to sleep in prison or what? So the governor um, had to come out to, to yesterday, yeah, I think it was yesterday, to disagree with the CDS, uh, Chief of Defense Staff, over the arrest of this Idris Ojo, you know, um, insisting that the suspect was one of the escapees from Koje prison. Well, this is what Nigerians had, had fished out already, you know. So, so it, it's it's a bit um, it's a bit uh, so funny, but the governor, uh, in a statement by his chief press secretary, said, "Quote: There was a mix-up." This is what the governor said, Roche Mekeru. There was a mix-up in the announcement by the chief of defense staff, General Loki Rabo. The attention of uh, Governor Akeru has been drawn to the announcement of Idris Ojo uh, as one of the attackers of Saint Francis Catholic Church. Or, arrested by security agencies. He says, Governor Credo acknowledged the confusion the statement has created in the public space, considering that the ugly event of June 5 attack in Oho preceded the unfortunate uh, Kuje prison incident. He says, there was a mix-up in the announcement by the CDS. It is a Joe who was number 14 on the wanted list of Kuje prison escapees, was arrested in his brother's house in Akure. All right, in Akure. Uh, the announcement of Idris, or the announcement of the arrest of Idris, arrest rather, of Idris uh, as one of the perpetrators of the June 5 attack uh, on the St. Catholic Francis Church, the St. Francis Catholic Church, or was a mix up from the Chief of Defense Staff. His brother, Jimo Ibrahim, received and accommodated him after he escaped from Kujay Prison. Are you listening? Mm. His brother received him and accommodated him after he escaped from Kujay Prison. He was thereafter moved and kept in custody of the security operatives at the same time that the attackers of our Catholic Church were arrested and brought into custody, hence the mix-up. You know, so when you begin to have such mix-up form, it's like, it's like throwing somebody in prison, you know, for stealing puff puff. And then you want to take people who are on But, but that's not possible. I'm coming. For, for, no, they've told if, if there are people, thrown people in, in jail. Uh, so they puff puff. For stealing something, someone they steal something small. But not puff puff. You no, know, it's, it's like puff puff. You know how much puff puff is today? <laughs> you know, but it's an example anyway. And then maybe you're taking uh, um, people on death row, going for murder, mm. and you just carry one of them. And then, you you know, the black person stole, stole puff puff, adding him to them. Mm. And it's all of you on, on trial for, and this, he says, oh, I, I was I was taking him for saying puff puff. They say, oh, sorry, you made a mistake. <laughs> you know, so so it, how possible is it? And this is uh, the, the kinds of confusion 
And then after the governor says this, two days after, they say they've arrested two more people the same day the CDS was announcing that. And these ones now, they, they, they're a swap. Because people were saying, look at the names that uh, the government said that ISWAP is are the ones behind it. You know, they didn't waste time. They didn't waste time. And then we're looking at the names that you're bringing out. They may not be ISWAP, because these are not the people, not to profile anyone, but this is what people were saying. I'm just, you know, that uh, they were not, they're not names normally associated with ISWAP. Then fast forward two days later, they said, as the CDS was making the arena speech, they were already arresting two more. So maybe the, 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 the military, the Nigerian, the, you know, uh, the armed forces, they need to do, and the security agents need to do a lot to convince Nigerians about what's going on, you know, like, what kind of mistake is that? That the, the, and the, you know the cool chief of defense stuff is that you have a name, a mix up. I mean, and the Nigerians have to say, "Oh no, no, I see you. You made a mistake. That one is one of those who escaped from." Oh, oh okay, okay. Ah, <laughs> sorry, oh, oh, it was a, ah, oh, it's a mix up. You know, so it was, so, so it, it would, it would definitely mean because what's going on? this is the highest level of of of, of security in Nigeria. I mean, so, so it, people believe that there is a lot that is. It's about deceiving Nigerians about. Nigerians don't believe it anymore. Nigerians don't even believe it anymore. And, uh, you know, to actually add to that now, if you say, I mean, that's the situation, there was an attack that happened. This attack happened before the prison escape. So if the prison was attacked, like you would say, is it that, you know, the young man strolled out of the prison, came and attacked, you know, the church and then went back to the prison and let her escape. It would therefore just m mean that, you know, the names that were published for those who escaped from the prison was not really true. No, no the, the governor said it all, that he was one of those who escaped. He did not participate in the, in the Owa massacre. Okay. Uh -huh. So imagine now he was in that Kujie prison for maybe uh, stealing something, right? As his name has been mentioned, they would put him on trial for massacre of people in that church. That's what I'm talking about. The governor said it was, a, it was just a mistake. So it's, it's a governor who has had to come out. I said it clarify. was a mistake. They said the record straight. I mean, so, so these, these are the things that are giving people uh, suspicion. You know, for me, I, I, don't, I don't go with the bandwagon, but you can't fault people when they suspect. And it was Nigerians, but it was ordinary people, some teenagers, young people, who pick phone and say, look, oh, ah, you yeah, know, that person was, and then, oh, yes, yes, we said, sorry, it was a mix up. Ah, are you kidding me? So the authorities need to do better. So people stop, stop, stop suspecting them. Messi, let's move on to the last one. We stay in Ondo State, where the governor of Ondo State, who has not paid, according to budget, <laughs> yesterday, budget brought some information of states that haven't paid salaries. Those are owing up to six months, those are owing three to five months, and so on and so forth. And Roti Mercado is owing salaries. I don't know which way should give him more publicity. He should go and pay his workers first before it comes to, to the media. Anyway, um, he is saying that he has no problem if Peter B wins the 2023 presidency, uh, as long as the presidency comes to the southern part of the country. Um, uh, so why, why, why are we giving him coverage? Well, why is it generating attraction? It's because he's um, a governor of the All Progressives Congress. So when he says something like this, people will jump on it. You understand? But he should pay salaries. There's only, one, there's only one state in southwest Nigeria owing salaries, according to budget. This is according to budget. They released information yesterday. That's on the state. And last time, if I'm not mistaken, on the state is all, all bearing state, if I'm not mistaken. You know. But anyway, um, he spoke on, on Wednesday, uh, just two days ago, on a TV program. Uh, he's a member of APC, you know, and he's close to Bola Bettin, if I'm not mistaken. You know. uh, so he was a candidate, a lawyer for one of the APC candidates, and later he was uh, you know, able to become governor himself. So on numerous occasions, Akhir has insisted that the presidency must go to the south, since uh, President Mahmoud Buhari, whose turn will be completed in 2023, is from the north. Um, he was asked if he, if he would have, so he would have supported a Muslim-Muslim presidential ticket if he was in, the, in an opposition party. And um, he said religion should not be an issue in 2023. All right, so, I mean, I don't want to take him out of context. He's not saying he doesn't support his candidate. But he says, well, if, if I mean, it's an honest answer, we should not read too much into it. If, if the APC doesn't win, if it will be wins, yeah, it's still the South, uh, as long as the South gets it. And I think it's okay. It doesn't mean he has left the APC. Or it doesn't mean he won't come for Tinubu. It's just an honest statement. No, but yes, he's, he's made an say. honest statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's talked about whether or not uh. you have uh, the All Progressive 
Congress winning, that's uh, Shiwaju Bola Tunubu, or you have Peter B winning, the most important thing for him is that, you know, the South must actually produce a presidency. And that's because you, in 2019, there was some sort of agreement, which is not constitutionally recognized. Uh, some people have described the agreement as a gentleman's agreement that, you know, power must rotate between the North and the South. The North and the South would definitely have to produce, you know, presidency. But uh, that also has, has also constituted, you know, a lot of issues because when you talk about the North and you talk about the South, we, we, you need to know that the country is divided into different regions. So it's not necessarily the North and the South. You have the North, you have the Northeast, you have the Northwest, you have the South, you have the Southeast, you have the Southwest, and all of these are issues. And so people are saying, oh yes, power must go to the South. Some people are very resolute that, you know, apart from saying that power has to go to the South, it has to be very specific. Power has to return to the Southeast or has to go to the Southeast because the Southeast, at, you know, at some point hasn't really, you know, produced any president or, you know, have anyone at the hem of affairs called the president. And so that's also another issue. But we, we can also not take out the fact that as much as we constantly say, uh, yes, it's okay to have power being rotated uh, being moved from one spot to the other, from one region to the other, we can also not take out the issue of competence. I mean, at the end of the day, we also need to have people who are very competent, who have what it takes, you know, to call the shot and move this country to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like uh, he, there's some he, mantra he, now. He, he, <laughs> should, he, he should go and pay salaries. But, but very and important. I mean, salaries are important. Pay your workers. Pay your very workers. Very important. It's not about doing buga for... For for this <laughs> on television, I mean, why why you have know, you decided to you know, incorporate when, you know, the word I mean, Bugatti into your vocabulary? Bit, you know, when they announced that they were arrested, people. Mm. This is the same governor who the last attack, you know, in in Oceans, you know, in those state. Yeah, these same people are suspect people suspect to be those terrorists and right, went to attack a, a community, you know, that is close to a, 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 a construction company yard. Let's call it a yard, you know, location, and them. Um, they were repelled by some security operatives. Some of them were injured. Some of the security men there were injured. And uh, the bullets hit the walls of a uh, construction company. The bullets touched the, the tires of the, the caterpillars and all those things. And the governor said, well, that he only came to shoot at the equipment there. <laughs> you know. But um, he's doing more than six months, six and more, you know, for some workers. So he should pay his workers first before well, we... That... When he pays, we can talk. Well, we have that... to go. We have to go. That's it on... On uh, our top training segment for now, uh, we'll be right back. Mercy, we have an uh, interesting analysis uh, of the headlines on today's national days. Stay with us.